After my attempt to recall and replace California Governor Gavin Newsom, then the criticism started flying. Here's a narrative. Elder was the wrong kind of Republican. Had Elder been a kinder, gentler Republican, then maybe, just maybe, the recall effort would have worked. The way they treated Glenn Youngkin, the gubernatorial candidate in Virginia, and Winston Sears, the lieutenant governor candidate in Virginia, shows you it would not have mattered. They would have treated anybody on the Republican side like dog meat had he or she been the front runner. For example, CNN's Lincoln Mitchell said this, Elder was precisely what Newsom needed to make the fear of Trumpism real in the eyes of California's substantial Democratic majority. Elder, a longtime conservative talk radio host, is well known among right-wing Californians, but many other voters have only gotten to know him in more recent weeks. Really? Keep in mind, 75% of registered voters in California are registered as something other than Republican. Echoing the theme, Here's the headline from the San Francisco Chronicle. Larry Elder is the Trumpist who may save Newsom's job. By Labor Day, Newsom had turned what started up as an up or down vote on his governorship into a choice between him and Elder, the radio show host Newsom relentlessly tethered to Trump, with a predictable outcome in this staunchly democratic state. For Newsom, the emergence of Elder as the GOP standard bearer was an unexpected gift. <laughs> really? The way they treated Glenn Youngkin and Winsome Sears, the gubernatorial candidate in Virginia, and lieutenant governor, gubernatorial candidate, completely destroys this elder was the wrong kind of Republican narrative. They treated them exactly the same way. Dogged them, tied them to Trump, talked about how this was Trump, 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 Trump. I mean, Winsome Sears, white supremacist. This is a black female whose dad came from Jamaica and got exactly the same treatment that I got. The problem is here, they want, they want white supremacy by ventriloquist effect. There is a black mouth moving, but a white idea through the running on the runway of the tongue of a figure who justifies and legitimates uh, the white supremacist practices. Black mouth moving? Again, they treated them the same way they treated me. Winsome Sears, black female, white supremacist. And in his ungracious victory speech, Gavin Newsom said, Trump may have been defeated, but... We may have defeated Trump, but Trumpism is not dead in this country. Pretty and phenomenal news. It was recently announced that Social Security benefits are going to increase by 5.9% in January. That's the highest increase in 40 years. This is the government admitting that inflation is out of control. And yet the left is still pushing through trillions more in spending. So how are you going to protect your savings from inflation? Diversify your savings into physical gold and silver with Birch Gold Group. Birch Gold Group is a company that I trust with precious metals. They have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, countless five-star reviews, and thousands of satisfied customers. And they can help you protect your hard-earned savings. Oh, yeah. That's neat. And now, an incentive for you to do so this month. When you text Larry to 474747 and purchase precious metals with Birch Gold Group by December 23rd, you'll get free silver for every $5,000 you invest. And yes, you can convert an IRA or eligible 401k into a gold IRA. That qualifies too. To get a no cost, no obligation info kit and to qualify for your free silver on every purchase by December 23, text Larry to the number 474747. This comprehensive 20 page kit reveals how gold and silver can protect your savings and how you can hold gold and silver in a tax sheltered account. So do it right now. Text the word Larry to 474747. That's Larry to 474747.
4-7. And in Virginia, they ran the same play. The stakes are high. Uh, when this election is over in Virginia, we will know. Have we seen the emergence of the Delta variant of Trumpism? The Delta variant of Trumpism. In other words, Yunkin, uh, same disease, but spreads a lot faster and can get a lot more places. That these Republicans are dangerous. That this isn't a party that's just another political party that disagrees with us on tax policy. That at this point, they're dangerous. They're dangerous to our national security because stoking that kind of soft white nationalism eventually leads to the hardcore stuff. It leads to the January 6th stuff. This wasn't about those pocketbook issues. This was about how white kids feel talking about what black kids go through. Let's just put it, call it what it is. This is about kids who were ready to have a conversation about race after George Floyd was murdered and adults pushing the issue back and understandably being nervous about talking about it and Glenn Youngkin being able to make political hay of that. That's that's really what this was about. If you look at the Youngkin campaign, they've uh, they've made it about kind of invented inflated issues like critical race theory and to, to close their campaign with an ad uh, featuring a parent who waged a campaign against Toni Morrison's novel, Beloved. I mean, it, it's just kind of unheard of. It's unheard of. And it harkens back to a long tradition in Virginia history. We know dog whistles when we hear them. And uh, But the sad part is, is that you even have some press who are following up with, with some of these same issues. I had an early interview today. Uh, and the person interviewed me said that, uh, yeah, critical race theory and that it's taught in, in public schools in Virginia. I'm like, which ones? This is a theory in law school. This is a dog whistle to divide people. Uh, and so let's call it what it is. It, it is about uh, racial divisions, racial hatred, racial animosity. And that's what they want to focus on right now. But what Terry wants to focus on is all of the people in the Commonwealth of Virginia, how he can continue to deliver for them, making their lives better. Uh, and that's what all Democrats want right now. But it, it's sad to see where the Republicans going, party's going because they have become a party of fascism and fear. The party of fascism and fear almost makes you long for the good old days when back in 2016, Hillary said. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. Right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. And unfortunately, there are people like that. And he has lifted them up. At least she only said half. And now you know they would have treated any Republican the same way. I have one more proof. Kevin Kiley was an assemblyman who also ran in the recall election. He finished a distant six. But recently he sent out a letter asking his supporters whether or not he ought to consider running for Congress. Guess how that was responded to by the Sacramento Bee. There are opportunists and scoundrels in Sacramento. And then there is Kevin Kiley. Maybe Kiley should write a letter that reads more like this. Dear supporter, as I throw my fancy education out of the window in the place of utterly craven political expediency, I am writing you today to discuss my future plans. My service in the assembly has basically consisted of hectoring Governor Gavin Newsom when his whereabouts are known. Consequently, I don't want to be one of 19 Republicans offering constructive, contrapuntal, conservative ideas in Sacramento when I can go to Washington and become part of the Trump-enabling mob. Can I call upon you to send me some money to help me in this effort to prolong my political career? If I run for governor, I will give you every assurance that I will finish well above sixth place in the primary. Furthermore, I will work hard to learn all the dog whistles that Glenn Youngkin used in Virginia. Now, is there any doubt that whoever the front runner would have been, he or she would have been trash, would have been tethered to Donald Trump? They would have called it a Republican takeover, just as they did to me just as they did to Glenn Youngkin in Virginia, just as they did to Winsome Sears in Virginia, and just as they just now did to Kevin Kiley in that article I just quoted you from, from the Sacramento Bee. After all, remember, the LA Times called me the black face of white supremacy. Same thing they called Winsome Sears. 
Ah, uh, it's nice to have a little bit of company. I'm Larry Elder, and <laughs> we've got a country to save. I will see you next time.